In this module, I'm going to share what I believe is the bottom line truth about our anxiety, yours and mine. I'm going to share the most powerful thing I have ever learned about anxiety in all my years of dealing with it, studying it, and cursing it. This is the absolute truth about what's causing my anxiety and what's causing your anxiety. And it's the best and worst possible news. So get ready. Take a deep breath. Fasten your seatbelt because this is going to change everything. Your thinking, your willingness to take action, and finally, your life. Are you ready? <sighs> you are causing your anxiety. Now, I understand it may not feel like it, but the truth is the worrying you do, the thoughts that are keeping you up at night, the thoughts that make you afraid to leave your home in the morning are all your creation. You are making yourself afraid. Now, I suspect you're arguing with me and saying, hey, you don't know my boss. You have no idea about my partner, my parents, my health. You have no idea what kind of trouble my child is in. You would be waking up in a sweat too. Anyone with my diagnosis, my physical challenge, my life would feel exactly the way I do. And I hear you. Believe me, I have done my share of waiting for the results of medical tests. I've battled cancer three times. I've lost a baby, raised children, cared for an aging parent. I've worried about car payments. I've worked crazy hours at challenging jobs. I know what it's like to stare at the ceiling at three in the morning, heart pounding, mind racing. I get it. But let me say again, we, you and I, are causing our own anxiety. And here's the truth. No matter what happens to us, we get to choose what we think about it, what we feel about it, and finally, and most importantly, what the heck we're going to do about it. I promise you, there isn't a person, place, or thing in this world that can make us anxious, that would make us anxious, without our permission. Our mothers, brothers, parents, or bosses can't make us anxious unless we think about them and allow, and, and the way we think about them makes us anxious. The government, our teachers, our co-workers, even the weather can't force us to be anxious. It's the fact that we dwell on them and what we think about them that makes our anxiety. Now, I know it's hard to believe that such wonderfully talented, smart human beings like you and I could be causing ourselves such misery, but that's the truth. And when we embrace that truth, when we acknowledge our incredible power to choose our thoughts, we get to be in charge of our anxiety, our worries, and our fears. We choose them, and we can choose to think about them differently. Once we own that, we are in charge of our anxiety for now and always. Now, I call that good news. We don't have to wait around, rely on someone else or something else to change before we can feel better. We don't have to wait for someone else to soothe our pain or set us free from this prison of our fears. We can do it for ourselves. Such good news. All we have to do is work together to create a toolbox of techniques and ideas and methods and solutions 
to help shift the way we think, feel, and act. So simple. We're all done here, right? <laughs> wrong. Oh, so wrong. Bad news is changing the way we think is a long-term complicated process that in my experience requires a lifetime of patience, gentle caring for your spirit, and a willingness to think about things in a new way. But we can begin to experience the power of change in this moment. You can start right now by saying to yourself, I'm ready to try something different. I'm ready to change the way I think about myself, my fears, and my life. I'm ready. I'm ready to start. All right. So how the heck do we do that? In our last module, we took an action to get us started, but I found the best way to really get to know how your anxiety is showing up for you is to keep a log of your thoughts and feelings for a few days, maybe up to a week. Now, this may sound like a lot of work. Well, <laughs> actually, it is a lot of work, but it can make such a difference in the information you have, taking an hour by hour look at when and where anxiety pops up in your life allows you to see what's triggering that anxiety. And it can highlight pa patterns of behaviors and thoughts and emotion. It highlights the particular ins and outs of your anxiety, the who, the what, the where, the when, the how, and the why of what's causing your fears. And that's what we're here about. We're here about getting to know your anxiety. All right, let's take another step in making this your own process. When you begin a daily log, it can be any method you wish. You can create your own log by using the, the template we've provided you here. You can track online on your phone. You can use just a calendar or a journal. You can do old school with a pen, whatever works for you. I recommend that you make entries as you go through the day. That's most effective because the data is fresh in your mind. But I, but I, get, I know that's not always possible. Log in at mealtime, log in before bed as a way to review the day, whatever works for you. But please, please, please do it. Getting to know who and where you are right now in this moment is the first step on the journey to where you want to be tomorrow. Let me sort of demonstrate how this works by taking a look at Gloria, who found keeping a log helped her to deal with the stress and worry of her retirement. Gloria and her husband had been planning for years to retire to a warmer client. Gloria could not wait. And at 65, the week she turned 65, Gloria was thrilled to finally be able to walk out of that office, leave her job as an office manager, sell the home where they'd raised their sons, and move south to the beautiful new house waiting for them. Gloria believed at last she was going to get to live the life of ease and comfort she'd been longing for and she was going to sleep in. Instead of feeling joyful, she was blindsided by sudden episodes of anxiety and panic that seemed to come out of nowhere. When she called her, her friend, her longtime friend, Ellen, Gloria said, you know, I've always been a little anxious, but down here, I don't have my usual routine, my job, my friends, my old house, my old neighborhood. I feel like I don't even know who I am anymore. I am overwhelmed and I am so anxious and I just don't know what to do. And Ellen said, you know, remember back in the office, we use this tracking technique to get a better look at the problems we were dealing with. But why don't you try something like that? Gloria said, oh, great idea. And so what she did was she kept track 
of her feelings and her thoughts in a, in a journal she designed herself. And she wrote in that log every evening after dinner, kept her answer, answer simple and straightforward. Within a few days, she noticed that she was most anxious in the morning as she was getting ready for the day ahead. She also noticed she had almost no anxiety on the days when she made plans ahead of time. She had something to do, something to look forward to, like, you know, a Zoom or a FaceTime call with her grandchildren. She also did better on days when she ate at regular times. As she studied that daily log, Gloria realized she needed to bring some structure to her days. She decided she would plan things to do ahead of time, and she would include things she really wanted to do, things she looked forward to doing. She scheduled her meals at the same time every day. She signed up for a class in archaeology and Tai Chi. She scheduled at least one call with her grandchildren every week, and she began planning with her husband a post-COVID trip to Asia, something she had always wanted to do. And as she made these changes, Gloria not only felt calmer, but she began to view retirement not as a dead end, but an opportunity to explore the things she loved, spend time with family, new friends, and to sleep in late. <laughs> a few months later, when she was talking to Ellen, Gloria was able to say, hey, Retirement is everything I'd hoped it would be and more. I've never been happier. Yay, Gloria. Now, how about you? Why not try keeping a log for a few days just to see what comes up for you? And you'll notice we've provided a daily anxiety log here if you choose to use it. However you keep track, it's up to you. I just highly recommend that you get started now, okay, once you have kept that log for a few days, you can start to use the information you're getting to put a plan together. I have 12 questions you can kind of think about as you review the data that you're getting from this log to help make some sense of what you've learned. Number one, when am I anxious? How often? once a day, twice a day, more than that? Is there a time of day that makes me anxious? Morning, sunset, whatever. Be specific. Knowing when you're, when you're anxious is really important in putting a, together a daily plan to help identify those times and then work out ways to make them easier for you. What or who makes me anxious? Number two. Who or what? Again, be specific. This kind of information gives you great clues about people, circumstances that can trigger you. And when you know your triggers, you can find ways to deal with them ahead of time. Three, what thoughts make me anxious? Is there something you think about that is absolutely guaranteed to make you anxious, wildly anxious? Taxes, politics, your children, your parents, how often are you thinking about that? And let me ask you, how do you feel when you think those thoughts? This is important information in figuring out where and how you can make some healthy choices. Four, is there something that always, always triggers my anxiety? This is huge. And this can play havoc in your life, this thing, this one thing. When you identify it, when you get real and honest about it, you can start to figure out how you're going to deal with it. Five, can I predict my anxiety or does it just come from nowhere? If you can predict when you're going to be anxious, there are probably things you can do ahead of time to prevent it. But 
If it comes from nowhere, the work is different. If this panic, if the anxiety comes from nowhere or seems to, the work is to start putting together an emergency kit. You know, you have a first aid kit. This is a first aid kit of anxiety busting tools you can use that you have it, you're ready, no matter what. The trick to dealing with this anxiety out of nowhere is to be prepared. Six, how long does my anxiety last? Again, it's this is important information in figuring out how and what is going to work to help you feel better. Seven, I love this one. Are there times during the day when I'm not anxious at all? This is so awesome because when you find those places, those calm places in your life, you can build from them. You can add more of that calm into your day, building from what already works. Eight, how much sleep am I getting? When and what am I eating? Oh, this is, this is vital information because not getting enough sleep, not eating well, makes a huge difference in your anxiety level. When you have this information in one place about how you're living, when you see something that needs a change, it allows you to bring some healthy lifestyle changes to your life, and that will help with your anxiety. Nine, where am I in my monthly cycle? <laughs> Does it make a difference? It may well. So if you find you're cranky, anxious, and pretty much nuts every time, you know, the same time every month, it's probably hormones. And just knowing that can be such a comfort. You are not losing your mind. It comes and it will go. And I think that eases some anxiety, but it also can give you an opportunity to strategize about ways to prevent or ease those symptoms. You can make a plan for ahead of time. 10, were there times in the past I successfully managed my anxiety and how? This is another great question because if you found things that work in the past, bring them out, dust them off, try them again. 11, what have I done to cope with my anxiety in the past that did not work? Hey, if what you did in the past didn't work, either give it a pass this time or take some time and figure out why it didn't work and figure it strategize ways that to put it to work more successfully if you choose to try it again. And 12, does keeping track of my anxiety make a difference in how I feel? Has it changed the way I feel about my anxiety? I truly hope so. I hope that keeping track of your anxiety is an incredibly positive step forward for you because the more you know about this process and your anxiety, the better you're going to be able to deal with it. Go through these questions, look for triggers, patterns, and cycles, and ask yourself, is there something in my environment I need to change, something I need to stop doing, start doing? Is my lifestyle working with me or against me? As financial expert Susie Orman says, quote, it's impossible to map out a route to your destination if you don't know where you're starting from. Logging in, taking the time to keep track is a really great place to start creating this new, exciting life you so deserve. So that's a wrap for today. In our next module, I'm going to talk about something we don't often talk about in public, something we usually discuss in whispers behind closed doors, something many people consider shameful or embarrassing. In the next module, I'm going to talk about when to go for professional mental health care. And if you choose to go that route, I'm going to give you specifics about how to get the right help for you. If you're like I once was and you are suffering in silence, it's time to stop pretending everything's okay.
It's time we get past this fear and the shame of not being good enough or okay. It's time we get past that idea that asking for help is a sign of weakness, when in truth, asking for help is a sign of real strength. And it's time we reach out to get the help we need and do it for the people around us who might need the same kind of help. Let's stop this needless suffering and let's do this together. <laughs>